Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Survival Org Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Connors. My wonderful co-host, Dennis Patrick, is currently lost at sea still. We're sending SOS beacons to help him right at the moment. But I have with me one of my favorite survivors of all time, the one, the only, Nina. Nina, say hello to everybody. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Colin, for having me. This is going to be great. So, Nina, what have you been up? Back to work. In Survivor, I went back to my uh, job I had before I went on Survivor. I worked for a um, community college district, and uh, I am the executive secretary to the chancellor. And uh, I actually went back to work two days after I got back. So oh, <laughs> wow. Like I had much downtime. <laughs> oh, no, it was terrible. It was terrible. Um, so it was, it was interesting, too, because, you know, being gone for seven weeks, Mm -hmm. um, people at work they had no idea where I was. I think people thought I was sick. Um, my hair had grown longer. Mm -hmm. It was a little darker when I came back. I, you know, I'd lost some weight, um, you know, even though I was kicked off early. Um, you know, I had a lot of time to work out and eat good and take it easy, so I, I was in pretty good shape when mm -hmm. I got back. So I think people thought I was sick, you know, that I was on medical leave, so it was kind of funny. And then, you know, not able to tell them, too, because they were – they were so relieved when they announced the um, the season that people said, oh, my gosh, I thought you were really sick. I'm so glad you're on Survivor. It's not something horrible. So, yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. So, yeah, back in the swing of things, uh, just keeping busy. You know, I have um, I have four kids, and uh, they keep my husband and I pretty darn busy and work and, you know, trying to keep stay in, stay in shape and, you know, this life is kind of back to normal. <laughs> what did you do to get on the show? Well, um, although I know they don't, they uh, CBS and Survivor don't like like it when people say how they got on the show the way I did. I mean, I was I was recruited, um, and although I was always a fan of the show, um, I the timing wasn't right when I originally started watching. Because I started watching Survivor from the beginning, I was hooked. Oh wow. Uh, I loved it, um, but when Survivor first came on, um, I remember watching a show. So my daughter is now four, almost 14, my youngest. Mm -hmm. So I remember sitting on the couch. I think she was still, you know, drinking out of a bottle. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that looks so cool. I could totally do that. So now, mind you, I was in my late 30s, mm -hmm. but I had four young kids, and it's like, okay, I can't be gone for that long. So I never applied, and I just watched the show as, you know, like most people who are fans just, you know, thinking about it. So it was really weird. I got a call out of the blue, and my girlfriend's work, or we debrief, you know, every Thursday. So what do you think about what happened last night? <laughs> who should got kicked off? And, and all of a sudden my phone rings, and it's my husband. He goes, hey, uh, um, somebody from uh, CBS called, and, you know, I did talk about a reality show. I'm like, what? So I wasn't, I wasn't really um, – sure what it was about because if you know anything, I don't know if you know anything about my history and my past history, but I was uh, worked for LAPD for years and I was involved in the landmark um, sexual discrimination case back in the 90s and it was big news then. I mean, I was on Inside Edition and CBS Evening mm -hmm. News and all over the LA Times. So it was a pretty big story. I mean, it was a huge uh, victory for women. It was just something that was bigger than me. You know, so uh, it, it recently came back up in the news about three years ago, and I got, so I, I thought it was something about that, you oh, know, because okay. I've been getting calls from the Times. It's like, okay, so I called this guy. He's like, hey, uh, so uh, so are you uh, Nina Dominakis, uh, you know, because I, I had a different name back then. I'm like, yeah, who wants to know? Mm -hmm. And um, so we talked a little bit. He goes, well, have you ever thought about being a survivor? <laughs> I'm sitting there, I'm looking at my girlfriend across, I'm not kidding, we're in the same room, I'm looking at her, and I'm like, oh, she is going to blow her mind, she is going to die when I get off this phone. Uh, and, he, and so he's asking me, so are you, I mean, so how old are you now? And I said, well, I'm 51. And he says, well, are you still in pretty good shape? I'm thinking, you know, I've been my, you know, my pride's and I'm like, damn right I am. I said, I'm in pretty good shape for, for, you know, any age, I think. He says, well. He ever thought of being a survivor? And I said, yeah, plenty of times. He said, why haven't you ever applied? And so I actually gave him the same story I'm telling you. It's like, you know, just timing is everything. I can't pick up and leave four young kids at home, and my husband's a policeman, and mm -hmm. we had crazy hours anyway. So anyway, he, I, you know, I, he says, well, send her out in. I give her the whole film, and 
went down there, and I couldn't believe it. It was like a whirlwind. And mm-hmm. before I knew it, I was packing my bags, and I was off. Do you like the earlier seasons where it's the more focuses on the outdoor survival aspects or the newer seasons when it's on the strategy? And do you think you would have done better in an earlier season? Oh, that is a really good question. Um, you know, I think – I think the strategy um, has always been a part of Survivor, and I, I say that. I know that now there's a lot of talk that, you know, there's way too many food challenges. You're really not suffering too much anymore. Mm-hmm. I understand all that. Um, I don't think – I think I could have done well in any season, and I and I always try to preface this. I am not by any means making an excuse for uh, my early exit on One World, but I will say this about it. They only had an all-female, all-male tribe once, one other time before. Mm-hmm. And you have to think about it from my perspective. I, I mean, one, shame on me. Um, I should have expected the unexpected, but women versus men never entered my mind. Never entered my mind. Mm-hmm. So I should have expected the unexpected, and I might have been a little perp- prepared. So when Jeff says, hey, welcome to Survivor, what's your name, blah, 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 okay, guess what, men versus women, I was back on my heels, like, oh, my God, are you kidding me? They, I knew it was bad, because here's the thing, I, except Monica, but Monica's kind of an enigma, I mean, she's a very young-looking 41, mm-hmm. um, I was 25 to 30 years older than every other woman out there, girl, woman, and however you want to describe it. That's a huge, that, that's, a gener- that's a couple generations. So if you think about it from their perspective, what do I bring to the table? They know nothing about me. All they look at is I look like their mom or their grandmother. Mm -hmm. So they had an instant bond just based on their age and their their dynamics. They were all single. None of them had children for the most part. So... What 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 common denominator? How could I have common ground with them? I tried really hard in the first three days to find some common ground with any of them, but it was impossible because it was just like being in high school. Mm-hmm. So it was <laughs> it was so difficult to find common ground. So I guess it's a long answer, but I think I think had one world been mixed tribes, I would have fared much better. I am a guy's gal. I really blend well with guys of all ages. And I think men don't, you know, in, in the game Survivor, I don't think any the guys would have cared how old I was, as long as I could hold my own. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, look at Denise. But, I'm sorry? Look at Denise, the last winner. Well, look, exactly. But, well, hey, let's look at the Philippines. That's a really good point. I'm watching the Philippines just going, oh, my God, why couldn't I have been on, this, on the Philippines? Because the the final three were all over 40. Mm-hmm. Two of them were over 50. So I was like, God, I was one season too soon. You know, I think <laughs> I would have fared better. Now, of course, you can't predict because, you know, things happen. There's all kinds of dynamics. But I think overall I would have fared better. I never really was able to dig into the strategy. I was never able to prove my physicality ever because – First challenge, you know, I hit my face in the net. That's a whole other story. But, you know, I'm tough. It's like, okay, so what? I broke my nose. I think I broke my nose. Who cares? I was ready to move on. But we never even finished challenge number one because Courtney broke her arm. Mm -hmm. Okay, challenge number two, I stood at the end of a balance beam and watched the fiasco of (laughs) Cat and the rest of them trying to figure out how to – that should have been a no-brainer. So that's, that's the extent of my physical challenges on Survivor. I was so disappointed because that was the part I was looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Like, it looked like so much fun. You know, all those, you know, wacky, crazy challenges and in the Philippines had some phenomenal challenges. I don't think a lot of women in our season would have done well in the Philippines. There was a lot of water challenges, a lot mm-hmm. of swimming challenges, and I think there were quite a few of those gals that couldn't swim. Be my guess. Well, one of the biggest criticisms of the One World cast was, I remember when it was first revealed, me and a lot of people who talk about Survivor went, you're setting it up to have the popular kids vote out the older That's exactly what it was. That's exactly what it was. And I think people who really love Survivor, really, it it was disappointing. I think Mm -hmm. it was boring because there really wasn't a strategy. I mean, the the girls, to their credit, they stuck to their alliance of five. Now, okay, that's that's a good strategy, mm-hmm. but it wasn't based on anything other than we're young women, we're going to stick together and screw these guys. Mm-hmm. That that was it made it boring. 
because that's, you know, that's easy, you know. And so as hard as I tried, as hard as Monica tried, it was tough. And I'll tell you one thing that happened off camera. Cam asked me, we, we, we went uh, to go get some water. And Cam asked me, she says, hey, how old are you? And I was like, I'm looking at her going, hmm. And I said, why is it important for you to know how old I am? You know, because I didn't know what else to say. You know, I'm trying to make a relationship. She goes, no, just wondering. And so, you know, really, what am I going to say? I mean, obviously, look at me. I don't look like I'm 30. I'm not going to be able to bluff that. I don't think I look like I'm 40. So why not just own it? I said, hey, I'm 50. I mean, don't let that fool you, girl. <laughs> so I didn't want to get on the wrong foot there. I mean, like, for example, Tarzan, he, at the first few days, he was telling all that he was 40. And I pulled him aside and said, dude, come on. <laughs> He goes, no, I'm 50. I said, okay, really, that's a hard 50, man. I'm 50. You are, you're older than me. You own it. So he, went, he was, he was hilarious. It's like, oh no, I'm, I'm 50. I'm like, you're not 50. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, that's what I'm saying. It would have been so much more fun to have been with the guys. Troyzen and I hit it off right off the bat. We talked and said, God, if only, you know, if only they had tried to be mixed. And I think for him too. I think it was really disappointing. I think for the same reasons. I think he really felt like. It was a downer to have the tribes set up the way they were. Mm-hmm. Well, that, so. once again, that was another huge criticism of the season was you finally have this great twist where they're all living on the same beach, but then you do it men versus women. And this is my next question. Right off the bat, it was a men versus women attitude. Like, how do you think Mike stealing the stuff at the beginning of the game affected the rest of the game? It was interesting. I mean, I I can't fault a guy for that. I, I thought it was brilliant. I mean, doom on us. I mean, we had our back turn. He was taking our stuff. It is Survivor, after all. But I think the women had this attitude like, oh, okay, it's us against them now. And I think they automatically... Um, took that attitude like it was men against women. I don't think if Mike had, had not stolen our stuff, I still think they would have been. And, and you know, it kind of irritated me a little bit because it was like, okay, it's us against them. Yet they were they were resorting to the same kind of things that women had been fighting for centuries and using their guile and, you know, sexiness to say, oh, come on, can we have some fun? Don't do that. Mm-hmm. That's such a fact. 200 years. You know what? I mean, you can't have it both ways. You're either going to be together as a female tribe and screw those guys, or you're going to try and make nice. But you can't have it both ways. Well, so I was all about, hey, this is our tribe. No offense. I know that at some point if there's a merge, we're going to want to make friends with them. I think that's smart because, you know, you're going to eventually, when, when you get it whittled down, you're going to have to make some alliance switches. But um, who would have thought that they would have, been able to make, you know, make it as far as they did <clears throat> as an all-woman alliance. I thought that was, I think a lot of it was luck, I have to be honest. Mm-hmm. Um, but well, It seemed to be stupidity on the part of the men, too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, if I, um, you know, Matt Quinlan and I are pretty good friends, and we were talking about um, about what happened afterward, and actually Bill, too, and we're looking at Bill going, dude, are you kidding me? You gave up immunity? Matt would never have allowed that to happen. He's a mm-hmm. game player. So I'm not really sure. I still don't know, and I'm not even really sure if Bill really understands the strategy of why they gave immunity up. <laughs> That's just a no-brainer. It just don't do it. Yeah. But I think they – I told Matt, and unfortunately he got voted out next, but I had a conversation with them the day I got voted out. I knew I was going home. And I said, dude, listen, those girls are going to stick together no matter what. Don't think that they are going to befriend you and you guys are going to – it's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. And I think some of those guys made some mistakes. I think Jay made a mistake by befriending them, thinking, oh, they got my back. I think Michael did the same thing. But they should have stuck together a little more. They really should have. It would have – I think they – who knows, because there's so much, you know, it's hard to say with the editing and what conversations took place behind each other's backs. But, you know, really, the the only strategic player out there was really Kim. The, the rest of them were just lemming, following her. Mm-hmm. I mean, she really controlled the game. When Christina and Alicia were fighting, did you ever think about trying to nudge your way in and pit one against the other? Christina and Alicia, you know, yeah, but here's here's what happened. It would have been fine with me if Christina had gone home. And really, if I hadn't shot off my mouth, she would have gone home. Um, but here's what happened. Um, they were talking. When we got back after the challenge, 
the disaster on the balance beam. I, I was so pissed off at CAD, I couldn't see straight. And that was really, you know, my downfall. But they were talking about getting rid of Monica. Mm -hmm. And I, and so Alicia, and Alicia was kind of like the mouthpiece for um, Kim. And she came up to me and said, okay, Monica's going home next. I'm like, what? I, I couldn't believe it. It's like, okay, Mark is going to on party. So that took place before we got in the balance beam. Then we had the balance beam challenge, and it went all went to hell. Mm -hmm. Got off the, came back. I'm mad as a hornet. Um, and so then Lisa said, okay, we changed our mind. So I, I pulled Monica aside, and I talked to her. I said, you know, Monica, they want to vote you out. And I am not, I'm not going to support that. I am not going to support that. And I'm going to go back and tell them this is crap. And she, and she could, and Mark was like, why do they want to vote me out? I work hard around camp. I, you know, I'm strong. I'm like, I don't know why. I mean, who knows what, what, why these girls are doing what they're doing. So we were on the outside of the alliance anyway, so I had nothing to lose. So Lisa comes up to me and says, well, I think we're going to change our mind. We're going to vote off um, Christina. And I say, you know what, Alicia? I am tired of you telling me who I should vote for. How about we vote you off? Oh. How about that? So she kind of gave me that look, and uh, then I knew it was over. So it, it was really, I think, you know, again, I got to the point where it was frustrating. Maybe in reality, maybe I really didn't want to be a part of their little team anymore. Maybe it was just more than I could take. I think, mm -hmm. but go back to the first day, this whole men versus women, it was, to me, a disaster. It was embarrassing. I thought we were playing terrible. We didn't understand anything about teamwork. I say we, all of us. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have been a team player, played basketball. I understand the whole concept. We just couldn't get it together. I don't think any of them really understood what that meant. So it, it was frustrating. So, you know, was I disappointed to get kicked off Survivor early? Oh, absolutely. Was I disappointed not to be a part of that mess? No. <laughs> really. it was, I, I would have, I tell you, Colton wanted to come over to the women's tribe, and I thought, okay, if you want to switch with me right now, brother, I will be happy to go over to the men's <laughs> tribe. You can stay here as a women. I will go over there. I will be happy as a clam, but they wouldn't let us do that. But I would have been so much better off so much better off. I saw in a secret scene that you were looking for the idol at the, yeah. men's, at the men's camp. Did any of the men help you try to find the idol? or? Oh, yeah. You know what? I I think that was pretty close. Um, and I, I'm not really sure. I'm kinda, I was trying to watch again when Kim found it, where she found it, but it was over in the men's side of the camp. Um, yeah, I... Leaf was helping me look for it. He is the sweetest guy. He was so nice, and I think actually too nice for the game. What a nice man. But he helped me quite a bit. Um, Tarzan walked by, and uh, he, he, he and I really never connected. I never really had a chance to get to know him one way or the other, but we really never made any kind of connection, which is fine by me. But he walked by the two of us. He's like, hey, what are you guys doing? And, and he says, oh, we're looking for an idol. Want to help? And Tarzan looked at me and goes, nah. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow, okay, well, there it is. <laughs> so anyway, uh, I didn't really have much time, um, so we were running out of time, and, and, then, and then I bumped into Troy's in, and he says, you know what, Nina, you, you've got to go there and make your case, man. You've got to go there and make your case with these women. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's the best chance you have. And so I did. And I don't know if you remember this one scene. I was sitting there next to Chelsea, and Kat was goofing around, and I sat there and I pointed and I said, she needs to go home. I said, this is embarrassing. And she says, trust me, I know. It, it, I'm, I've never been this embarrassed in my life. I said, this, I don't know if you remember that at all, but oh, yeah. this is I had this conversation. I had this one. So that conversation went on for a while. I said, I said Chelsea, you and Kim are, are – you, you guys are running the show here. You know I deserve to stay here. You know I deserve to stay. Mm -hmm. So here's what happened. So I talked to Kim, too. I tell her the same thing. So the next th scene you see on TV, Kim and Chelsea are down on the beach, and Chelsea says to Kim, you know what, Nina's got a good point. She deserves to stay. And Kim says no. So when they come back, Kim tells me, I'm sorry, Nina, but Chelsea said that you've got to go. And it was Kim all along. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, I've had a little bit of beef with Kim about <laughs> that. But, you know, again, it's Survivor. But, I mean, Chelsea really had my back. And and uh, I should have stayed. I, I think that, you know, that early on in the game, I think you should reward good behavior. And I think 
I think there's all kinds of things they could do differently, but it was a disaster. I mean, Kat, I know she's young, and that was part of her saying that was her excuse that every tribal council, well, I'm just so young. Well, you know, being young and youthful actually is an advantage. I mean, you should be stronger and in better shape and all those things, but what got her in trouble more than anything and what my big gripe was is she was just a distraction at camp. She cried all the time. You know, she wasn't really a team player. It was, look at me. I'm doing this. I'm, you know, so it, it bugged me. What was she it crying really about? Did. I have no idea. <laughs> she was just always crying. It was, it, was, it was always some drama thing. She had some, I don't know, something with Colton. I think she was crying about that. And, you know, I was really trying to stay away from her because, like I said, she was more of a distraction than anything. But she, she just immature. So I'm not sure. She was crying about you know, relationships, and you said this, and I'm trying this, and, 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 you know, I guess when you get to my age, you know, and I have kids, I have kids that are her age, I just, it's lost on me. It's like, okay, you're out here playing for a million bucks. Grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Grow a pair. <laughs> <laughs> As a proud, independent, intelligent woman who has gone through so much, I imagine that you were just disgusted on seeing some of the women's behavior because I know I'm a 21 year old guy, but even I was like, really, Ugh. right? Well, and the lot of stuff you didn't you didn't have the uh, luxury of witnessing, but yeah, there was a lot of talk around camp was just beyond my comprehension. I was just losing brain cells every minute I was out there, and I was disappointing because I would tell you I have. I have two daughters. I have a 14-year-old and a 17-year-old, and they are so much wiser and mature and, than a lot of the gals that were out there. It was sad. I thought, wow, this is this is our future. This is the future of American <laughs> women. This is, this is as good as it's gonna get. God, I hope not. So, and, and you know, I understand. I think, in part, and I think you can appreciate this. Um, a lot of people go on Survivor for their 15 minutes of fame and beyond. I mean, it's a, it's they want it to be a launching pad for some other career. That wasn't me. You know, even Jeff Probst said it, which I was offended by, but I think now I get what his remark meant. He said, you know, Nina's rough around the edges. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? Well, I wasn't polished, you know. I didn't have my, you know, my, my hair was short then, and I, that's just the way I wore it. Now I can wear it longer, but... That's just me. I didn't, you know, pluck my eyebrows before I left. I wasn't tan. I, you know, I just like, I'm going to go play Survivor. So I didn't even, didn't even dawn on me about the whole TV part of it. I was like, oh, and then I thought, holy crap, I'm going to be in my baby suit. <laughs> so, you know, I had a different take on it. I was not thinking about all these people watching me on television. I really didn't. It wasn't important to me. I was so excited about playing the game. I wanted to win the million bucks. I wanted to be the last person standing. And so I wasn't concerned about the editing, my 15 minutes of fame, how I looked. Because I knew that the person I am now is a person that's going to be on television, so I wasn't worried about it. You know, I wasn't going to be somebody different. So, yeah, it, it – so I forgot what your question was. Mm -hmm. but it, it was it was a little frustrating. I think, you know, I could – Young men like someone your age, I'd have no problem with that because I think I have the same kind of, you know, guys are, for the most part, I'm not saying all of them, but guys are competitive. They understand teamwork. They understand, you know, the certain common denominators that transcend gender, you know. But we just resorted to basically high school drama. And I thought, oh, my God, this is like listening to my kids talk about crap that's going on at school. Mm -hmm. It really was. I was looking at Monica going, what the heck happened? <laughs> this is supposed to be how Survivor. Is this, how is this happening? <laughs> yeah, it was very frustrating. It was. And and you didn't get to witness a lot of that on TV, but there was a lot of drama, and it was just not relevant to what we were there to do. It was crazy. It was crazy. Were you honestly surprised that the men took the immunity during the first challenge? Was I surprised that they... That they won it because they had the oh, option? You know what? No, no. I mean, you know, here's the thing. <laughs> The girls were, the women were really pissed by that, but I thought, okay, if it were me, I would have said the same thing. Sorry. Um, but here's the thing. Um, it, it was a smart move because you have to think about it. We were behind in the challenge, mm -hmm. okay, number one. But number two, 
Tarzan proved to be not a very physical threat at all. Okay, he was he he never he was always first out in challenges from the beginning to the end. He he really was a mess. He hadn't even attempted that challenge yet, and I think he would have had a real problem getting across that balance beam, and I think we would have overtaken him. I think it would have been a real problem, and I think they knew that. Mm-hmm. So they took the win. I don't blame them. I would have yeah. done the same thing. I mean, you know, that's the way it goes. Well, that's something I didn't understand as a viewer watching when the girls got so upset. Cause I was thinking in terms of if it was my team, a mixed, you know, mixed gender team versus another mixed gender team, if the mixed gender team didn't immediately take the win, everyone would right. assume this stupid. Well, and, and you know, and then, I, and then we go back to the whole thing about the women. You know, we want to be a girl power. We're tough. Oh, give us fire. Oh, no, we're going to stick together. Oh, let us win the challenge. No. You know what? You can't have it both ways. Don't be a hypocrite. I mean, if you're going to stick to that, stick to it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the challenges were, uh, let's be honest, the challenges were more gen- gender neutral. They weren't real strength things. They were mm-hmm. things that would make it fair to women and men. In fact, the balancing challenge, we, we should have just cleaned our clock on that. <laughs> it's all about balance. It's all about balance. And getting close together, and women are, you know, good with close contact with each other. We don't shy away from that. Think about what those, I mean, those guys have to get right in each other's faces. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, that's how that challenge works. you got to hug somebody to get around that. Band. They had no problem with it. They did it. Mm-hmm. And it was yeah, that so. is interesting. And another thing people talk about is how the first time it was men versus women, they did very similar challenges, and people were complaining that the challenges were actually geared more towards women. But then suddenly, you guys do the same challenges, and the men still win. That was crazy. Yeah, I know. It, it it was crazy. It was so discouraging. But you know that balancing challenge also was about trust. You know because it's they ever played that trust game where someone is in front of you with their back to you and they fall backwards and you catch them? Do you, mm-hmm. do you trust them to catch you? It, it's, it was the same kind of thing. So it told me a lot about what the women thought of each other. They didn't trust each other. They didn't trust each other to do it. You know, Monica came through and she's like, okay, I understand what this is about. So she jumped in the water, boom, 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 all the way across. And it's about trust. You trust me to hold you and get you across the beam. And, and they were fighting each other, like, don't push me out. You know, you could hear it. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> It was pathetic. We weren't even close. We weren't even close. But let's talk a little bit about Colton. Did you have any interactions with him, and what was he like? I had a lot of interaction with Colton. Um, you know, he spent a lot of time over at our camp, and he, I, I don't know, some of it I thought was just gameplay, and he was just, you know, mugging for the cameras, and he was, but I think he was truly disappointed it was men versus women. I think he felt like that was really going to screw him. But he didn't help himself by spending so much time over in our camp. I mean, he spent an inordinate amount of time over with us. You know, he wasn't helping out with the nest camp, building shelters, doing any of that. And those guys were not, um, I mean, they, they wanted him to be part of their tribe. It wasn't like they said, hey, we don't want you, you know, you're gay, you're this. You know, they were very receptive, and, and you could tell, it's like, come on, dude, you're part of us. But he spent so much time with us that naturally they thought it started to distrust him. Mm-hmm. You know, where's his loyalty? Because really, you know, the tribe that sticks together and has the members going to the merge is going to do better mm-hmm. individually. And so I think that's what they were thinking at first. But he and I go along great. Um, you know, he he tried this tack like you my and my mom kind of thing. It's like, okay. And I and I told him, hey, you know, Colton, I've got four kids at home. I'm not have, out here to be your mom. Right? <laughs> so, uh, and he tried, and then he, I found for Monica, he's trying to same tack with her. I think he was just looking to find, you know, some uh, sympathy and support. But we got to talking afterwards when we were at the uh, finale. He and I talked quite a bit, and he was very concerned about how he was going to be perceived. You know, he, he took a lot of heat um, publicly from some of the comments he made about Bill and about Christine and just things he said. And he says, I'm really going to pay for this. I said, you know what, Colton, the best thing you can do, because he's young. I mean, he's very mature. I think he's realizing that <clears throat> he said some things that were very inflammatory, as did Lucia. But I said, the best thing you can do is apologize for it. Don't make excuses and just own it and move on. So, um, you know, I think it was, I think he it, it, it was probably very tough for him. I think he handled it okay. Um, and hopefully he learned from it and he's grown from it. What was your relationship like with Courtney? And did you ever try to align with her? Or how did she fit in in your camp? 
You know, Courtney wasn't around very long, but we were, <clears throat> Courtney, Monica, Christine, and I were pretty much on the outside of the alliance of five, so it was just the four of us. So we kind of hung together basically just out of survival. But I liked Courtney. Um, she was very different from the other women. I think if she hadn't hurt herself, it was going to be very difficult for her to fit in. I think she felt the same way. I think, um, you know, she's a mom. Um, she was almost 30. I think she felt like she really didn't have a lot in common with, with the gals. And, you know, she they our tribe depended on her to do all the weaving and pretty much dumped it on her. And uh, I think she was a little frustrated. She was a little she was a little overwhelmed by it too. I don't think she was very happy with the whole men versus women, um, because I think she's the same way. She worked in a motorcycle shop. Um, she liked to hang out with guys. I think she was more of the same kind of feeling as me. It's like, oh crap, this is not what I was hoping for. So, um, but I got along very well with her, and and I think she was very disappointed that she went out so soon and mm-hmm. broke her wrist. That was tragic. Were you happy though when she got out? Did did you go okay? I moved one place forward, or did you worry about you have no one else? When she was when she was re- medevac, um, it was a concern. Um, Monica and Christine and I were were like, wow, because we we were hoping that we could, you know, break that five somehow, you know, that we would be able to maybe pull one of them to our side and flip it 5-4. Um, we, were, we were hoping for Chelsea. We, we were really working on her. And if we'd had more time, we might have been able to get her switched. Maybe. I mean, that's sort of thing. It's easy to, you know, maybe morning quarterback this thing. Um, but that early on in the game, we might be able to do it. I know that uh, Kim and Chelsea are pretty good friends now, but that's as a result of being third, out there 39 days with each other. But mm-hmm. who knows what could have happened early on in the game. We might have been able to, you know, you find a way in. And Monica was really working hard, you know, trying to find a way in to her heart. And, you know, think about it. I, if, if you, From what I saw on television, I was making some headway with Chelsea. It's like, give me a chance. I'm strong. I can, you know, I'm a team player. And she was advocating for me. So who knows? Um, yeah, it, but once Courtney was off, it was pretty bleak. I mean, we, you know, we were all thinking, God, if we can just find an idol, uh, <laughs> we could maybe blindside somebody, you know, it would have been great, but man, it was tough. Would you go back to play again if you were asked? Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I have said in the past when I got back that no, I wouldn't. But you know what? I I don't think I think I'd be lying to myself if I said I wouldn't be intrigued by going back again because I'm I'm still hooked on the show. I mean, I come home and if I'm not watching it live and DVRing it, I mean, I've got to watch it. I just it just fascinates me, and I really think I could have done better. Now I have to tell you though, after watching Port Francesca get off voted off <laughs> first twice, it's like woo. But you know. I think I would say I would go back, and here are my conditions. <laughs> no men versus women and no Russell Hans. <laughs> I don't want to be left on maroon on an island or anywhere with that dude. So, don't worry. Yeah. It won't be Russell Hans. It will be Sean Hans. So. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> or crazy nephew. Or one of the other Hanses that they have on reality shows. <laughs> Yeah, I think I probably would. Um, and again, it just it just all depends. I mean, I'm it's it's it'd be a tough decision to make with work and all of that. But you know, I guess I'd let them let them ask me that first and then think about right. it hard. But yeah, I think why why not? I mean, it's such a it's a chance of a lifetime the first time. I mean, to get to a chance to do it again is just would be phenomenal. What was your and best I'd, moment? Oh, go right ahead. I would certainly do things differently, but you I'm sorry, what was your question? What was your best moment we didn't get to see on screen? The best moment that we didn't get to see on screen? Well, you know, I wasn't out there very long. Um, I don't know. I guess, you know, this, the whole, I think just listening to to all of us collectively, the women, just trying to have a conversation about what we need to do and how we need to do it. I, I think what was interesting, too, and, and it's not just one particular moment, but it's something that's always bothered me. I was amazed when we when we got to the beach how fast 
that alliance was formed. They knew each other intimately within the first five minutes. And I thought, how in the hell did that happen? They knew each other's nicknames. But at the beginning, of the, you know, you heard Alicia, okay, it's me, Cat, Fab, blah, blah, and they already knew each other's names. You know, I'm good at names too, but, you know, there's so much going on. you you got to wonder, how did that happen? How did, they get, how did they get that alliance together so quick? Monica and I, it really puzzles us that you could get form that tight alliance that fast. It's like, you got to wonder, was there shenanigans going on in the pregame? <laughs> Seriously, I mean, you know, it's 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 really amazing to me that they could have clicked that fast. Well, mm. what I find the most amazing about the alliance isn't necessarily that it happened on the first day because, I mean, we've seen first day alliances happen. It was how they clicked on the first day. It was all women, and they all managed to stay together. That's where I just look at and go, that's amazing. Well, and it wasn't, but honestly, Colin, it wasn't the first day. It was in the first ten minutes. Mm. I'm not kidding. They They were solid immediately immediately and it was like with the 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 whispering and stuff was already done and we're, i remember walking over to see our salani uh you know banner mm-hmm. and i'm looking at courtney and i'm looking at monica i'm like what the hell just happened where are you we, where are you new? where are you out i'm like okay we'll do a counting on our fingers going wow it's five against four already we haven't even, had, we haven't even said a lot of half of those folks it was wild. That is wild. crazy. And, you know, that's the reason why they did the next season with three tribes of six foot, because they wanted to break up the final five alliances that have been happening. Right. Right. Well, smart. Mm. Um, because they just made it, it was too, I guess, predictable, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it was just, you kind of could tell where it was going. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Once Colton left, everybody knew Kim was going to win. There was never really any yeah. doubt in anyone's mind. People would well, say, maybe Sabrina, but we all kind of knew it was Kim. Yeah, I would, yeah, I don't think I think based on what just what I knew about just people's personalities and what they were doing, uh, I would never have voted for Sabrina. I mean, she really didn't have any gameplay. She didn't help her on a camp. I mean, really, she had no strategy going. I, I would never have voted for her um, if if I had been on the jury. Kim, Kim was working it. I mean, you have to give her that. I mean, she mm-hmm. really was working it. It'd be interesting to see how she would have fared maybe on Philippines or even now. You know, as a first time around. I'm not talking about second time around. <laughs> well, I think she could have done really well in all of her seasons. And even though we just talked about how the women in your season weren't necessarily the best representation of women, I have to say with Sophie, Kim, and Denise, I think that's actually a pretty good cross-section to show that women can do really, really well in Survivor. Right. I think that's true. Um, yeah, Sophie, I, I, it blew me away how she kind of... Things just kind of fell into place around her. Although she had good gameplay mm-hmm. and she did do well at some challenges, uh, it was amazing. I mean, smart woman too. Denise, I think Denise just played brilliantly all the way through. I mean, mm-hmm. you got to think about it. She went to every single tribal council, every single <laughs> one. It's like you have got to be kidding me. And 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 I think um, her alliance, aligning herself with Malcolm to see then again that's the kind of alliance I would have wanted to make. And it was smart, you know. So she, she's athletic. She's very intelligent. Um, she never pissed anybody off. Mm-hmm. You know, she, she would listen. Um, very, she was very careful about what she said at Tribal Council because, let's face it, Jeff tries to suck you in. That's part of what he does best. So she always thought about what she was going to say. She was very careful and calculating about what she said, knowing that everything you say will come back at some point. Okay, I have a question for you, and it's very random. This is my curveball question, and I ask this to every single survivor, and I've gotten some really mixed results. Sometimes it's amazing, and sometimes it's awful, but are you ready? I guess. I'm sitting down. (laughs) Can you do any celebrity impression? (laughs) No. Nope, I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> You're the fourth no I've had in a row. Come on, is there any anyone you can imitate? Can you do a Yao Man? Can you do a Jeff Probst? Oh, God. You should be talking to my husband. He's got all kinds of imitations. Um, I don't... Well, if your husband's here and he can do some, I, I, I'm, I'm cool with that. It would be interesting. Well, my husband does a great My husband does a great Sean Connery. <laughs> He's like the best Sean Connery. It's like he sounds... You want to hear a Sean Connery? Yes. Oh, i got to find him first. I mean, 
I'm sorry, he's not here. I went to go pick up my daughter. Oh. Um, I don't have, I don't do any, I don't do things like that. I'm kind of, uh, I don't do impressions. <laughs> so I'm sorry. I mean, I'm going to ruin this whole show, but not you know, doing an impression. It's so okay. Yao Man different. couldn't do it. And the best one I ever had was when I asked, um, I built up the question just like a few, and then I said, okay, it was with Richard Hatch, and I said, okay, Richard, can you do any celebrity impressions? And he just went, no. <laughs> it was silent. <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, I, I'm more of a, yeah, I'm not really an entertainer. I guess that's it. I'm more of a, I'm more of a doer, so I don't really follow anyone. So who, what's your, what was your favorite impression that someone's done? Uh, Jimmy T did Mr. Magoo. And I like that. <laughs> Johnny Fairplay did uh, Macho Man Randy Savage, which I also enjoyed. Oh, gosh. Well, I'm looking forward to um, to meeting Jimmy T. Actually, I will be seeing him at Reality Rally. So. so tell us about Reality Rally. This is the first event I'm getting involved in, and I'm really excited to do it because I, I was thinking about it. And, and when I talked to Jillian, I thought, wow, she got kicked off the same place I did, you know, mm -hmm. second. She's older, like me, um, and I thought, you know, I was so disappointed, and it was all about me. It's like, I can't believe I got kicked off so early, and here's a woman who's taken, you know, something, you know, made lemonade out of lemons and doing a great event, and so I thought, you know what, I can get behind that. I think that's really great, and, and it's, it's nice that she's taken her uh, 15 minutes of fame and, and really gotten behind a really, you know, excellent project, so... Can you tell us about some of the events at Rally Rally? Well, they have. I know they're going to have uh, an amazing race type of event, um, and I know there's lots of meet and greets that they're going to have uh, with the um, the people that are going. And there's quite a few. I know there's quite a few of my castmates that will be there that I haven't seen in a while. Um, Chelsea's going to be there. Chelsea Meisner, uh, Ken Spradling, uh, Kat Ederson. Um, uh, Tarzan, uh, Jonas, Reese, Troyzan, let me see, I'm sure I'm missing some, uh, oh, Christina, Cha, Alicia, I think probably most of us are going to be there, so that's going to be a nice little reunion for us, <laughs> and, uh, you know, some of the, some of the people that I've admired over the years that I'm looking forward to meeting for the first time, Holly Hoffman, uh, Julian, of course. Uh, Denise uh, will be there. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty exciting. Well, let's so, say I can't make it down there. Is there any other way I can help out? You know, you can go to the website, um, realityrally.com, for you or anybody who's interested. And um, if you if you are interested in sponsoring a star, uh, a star, you know, a reality star like like You're me a star or, in my or anyone book. else. Okay, thanks. Um, you can sponsor us to raise money. Um, I've already hit my goal. I wanted to raise over a thousand, and I've I've raised more than eleven hundred. So I'm still not finished. I'm still working on it. But it it is it is a great event. It raises money for cancer. Um, it's an honor of a young gal who died at a very young age of breast cancer. So the money raised, I think, 100 percent of all money. Uh, raise goes to help with mammograms or detection of breast cancer or something that's really critical for women of all ages. So that's a great way to meet, you know, your favorite stars. I mean, people like Philip Shepard and Richard Hatch will be there. And uh, so it's, I think they have, you know, 30, 40, 50 uh, stars from Amazing Race and Big Brother. And um, it's, it's going to be fun. I know they're going to have lots of interviews and meet and greets and, you know, meals, and they have this big, amazing race type uh, event that you can participate with a reality star. And so it's just a big weekend of fun. It takes place April um, this, let's see, it's this sixth and seventh, and it's in Temecula. And if you can't go, you can certainly, you know, donate on behalf of one of your favorite reality stars and raise some money. And it's a good thing all the way around. And help out an amazing cause. Thank you so much for coming on, Nina. It's been wonderful, and I hope I can speak to you sometime soon. Absolutely, Colin. Thank you. I really appreciate it.